Hello everyone, this is Tas, and welcome to my new Touch Designer tutorial. I asked my Patreon supporters uh, about topic for the next tutorial, this one, and they choose the topic of vertex shaders. And the vertex shaders is kind of huge topic, so I decided to divide my tutorial into two parts. This is part one, it will be about some basic stuff, basic functions, for vertex shaders and also we will focus on single geometry shaders by single geometry I mean that we would not talk about instances and uh, in part 2 we would talk about instances and using vertex shader to modify instance uh, geometry okay I don't know what we gonna end up with, how our result will be will be looking. Here are some examples I come up with while I'm researching this topic. So probably we will make something that looks like this, maybe something different. I don't know. We will see. Uh, as for the difficulty level, I'd say. Uh, I will do my best to explain everything you need to know about uh, GLSL, but I wouldn't go into details about Touch Designer interface. So I wouldn't uh, show you how to create the nodes, how to connect it, how to copy paste parameters and everything. That's so I hope you know how to use Touch Designer. And for the GLSL, I will try to explain it. Okay, here's our new component. And uh, I hold the Shift K and I want to add a tube because it's uh, kind of good to show different vertex parameters. Then I connect it to facet. I'll explain it later to the null. I add uh, geometry. I also need for camera, light, uh, and render. Okay. Let's move it a bit more tidy. Here's geometry. Here's a render. I make it look it square. Square render, here's our camera, a light, maybe I'll connect my camera to the light, move light a bit, makes it a bit yellow, so I'll see better what's going on with colors. And for the tube, I'd like to use the primitive type as polygon, uh, because it would be easier to explain, but you could also use mesh and uh, I'd like my tube to be narrow and maybe two points height. Okay, let's set my camera something like this. And as for the shader itself, um, the vertex shader uh, goes into GLSL material here in GLSL mat, but I prefer not to do everything from scratch because if you use GLSL mat, you almost don't have anything. I prefer uh, to use Fong at the start, and in Fong I can set up uh, the diffuse color. Maybe I'll, I don't know, use some constant top. Uh, colors some colors as a diffuse parameter uh, maybe I'll add the rim if I want maybe I'll add color map a meat I never anything else I need so and then I'll uh, press the output shader button Okay, and now I have a GLSL material with 
a lot of uh, predefined uh, predefined uh, variables so I don't need to type it myself so it's a uh, much easier to start with okay I use this uh, gel cell material as a material for geometry here's my vertex shader here's my pixel shader and my info uh, if you're not familiar with uh, open gel pipeline it goes like this a geometry uh, send uh, data about vertexes and normals into vertex shader which uh, do do everything uh, to the vertices and normals then pr sometimes it goes to geometry shader but now we don't have it uh, we don't have geometry shader so the vertex shader pass all information uh, not all information some information like the some things about col instance color the world space position normals in camera index into pixel shader and pixel shader do everything about colors so the all this diffuse materials and everything happens in the pixel shader and we wouldn't talk about pixel shaders at all today well maybe we'll do some color in it, in it but probably not so much we will focus on the, uh, this vertex shader okay i also set the out um, and maybe open it to you here and always visible okay so let's start let's open our shader and uh, i really recommend you to use some external editor with uh, syntax highlight it can be set up here in dialogues uh, not in edit preferences uh that's here in the text editor i use sublime text editor and here's our vertex shader and touch designer provides for us two very important variables it's variable p which is a uh, coordinates of our vertices and n which is normals and the very simple stuff that's uh, probably good to start with is um, to add some variable i use uh, here vector two page but you can use vector one here i just like to start in fresh page and i call this parameter u uniform i don't know dist distance and change plus number of into two uh, and I can and I need to declare it here in the shader uniform float float means that this uh, variable holds uh, only one value if it holds two value it vec2 three vec3 three, and four vec4 four. only one variable that goes in this box so i could all uh, type something uh, meaningless number here just to uh, get just to give me a visual cue that uh, i'm using only this parameter so when i see this ridiculous number i know okay they does doesn't mean anything it's just my uh my thing that i'm using it's not necessary i just like to do it so i can always see how much how much uh, parameters this uh, uniform holds in this case one okay let's start from modifying our vertices position let me create a 
new variable, new position, and make it equals to old position. I'm doing this uh, because I want to keep my old position as well. Maybe I will need it, maybe not. But uh, I declare new position. So here in uh, the world space position, I need to, instead of P, use new pos. And nothing going on because we didn't do anything. But now we can uh, add to the, this new position our variable and it disappears but, but it not disappears it just moves away uh, I'm using only one variable so it moves in every for every axis for x y and z it moves into uh, points Of course, I could use uh, just to demonstrate it. I create a new variable u23, just uh, uh, uniform rec free u23. Uh, I could do this, and for in this variable, I hold three parameters. So I could move by x direction, by y direction, and by z direction. But uh, to make everything simple, I will use only udist here. So everything moves the same. OK. Uh, and this makes sense because we add into the every vertices the same, same number number two uh, so the whole geometry moves uh, similarly and if I multiply it instead of adding it's just a scaling it's scaling as you can see but there is uh, no really good no reason to do it in vertex shader because we could easily do it with uh, with uh, transform sop. But what good about the vertex shader that we instead of uniform adding or multiplying like this, yeah, we could uh, instead multiply different uh, or add a different uh, different number dependent on something for example depending on our y position y position it's new position y multiplied by distance so here our movement uh, uh, let me move uh, my tube into a starting point. So it's anchors it. Um, it's like pivot point, where it's where my tube starts and where my tube ends. So uh, since the y coordinate for the this end of a tube equals zero, it will add to the points zero. And when my tube ends, it height two, so y equals two. So for the position for that point, we'll be added two multiplied by our variable two point seven. Okay, but what if we want to move it uh, not in one direction, but uh, uniformly in different directions? And we have our normals. I can display it here. Here's my normals. So if we multiply this to normals, it should do this. 
So now it moves not in one directions, but in uh, directions of our normals as well. But it also depends on our, in our Y position. However, if we move our point, uh, I'll call it pivot point or anchor point uh, lower, it doesn't look very good. It becomes dark and something wrong going on here. And that's because we multiplied by very big values, so we messed up with position, normals and everything because we have a negative values here. Because our height is 2, our anchor is 0.5, so here is minus 1 multiplied by uh, 1.5, and this would be added to the position, so it's really messed up. What can we do with that, about it? We could, uh, instead of using the Y position itself, we could use an absolute value of Y position. And now it looks much better. Okay. So this way of non-uniform uh, scaling, or oh, this time it's not scaling, it's moving, but if we do uh, multiplication, it would be the same, but it's very small geometry, so I prefer to show everything with addition. And it works like this. Okay, good. Next. Next is noise. Uh, if you go into the wiki, into the right GLSL material section, we have a function called uh, TD Perlin noise and TD simplex noise. As an input, this function uh, taking VEC2, VEC3 or VEC4, like our noise in tops or in chops, and gives us float number between minus 1 and 1. So let's use it. Let's use Perlin noise. Uh, and we can create a new geometry, a uh, new, new variable. Float noise equals to deep Perlin noise, and we need to give it some uh, three, two, or four parameters. And let's use our position. Nothing going on because we d didn't use our noise yet. So now let's um, multiply, uh, let's add a noise to our position. Well, it doesn't look very good. Let's try to multiply, okay, multiply it to the normals. Okay, it's better maybe this noise is too big, uh, too small. <laughs> okay, it's about right. But it's a bit boring because this noise isn't moving. So what could we do? We could create a dynamic variable. Uh, let's call it U time. And it would be Eps times seconds, because you couldn't use Eps times seconds in GLSL, because uh, Eps times seconds is uh, Python. So first you need to create a variable. Uh, here you need to declare it. And now you could use it here. So, our parallel noise could uh, took as input VEC4, so four values. And we have three values as position, so we could use four as uh, with our time, but it wouldn't work because a shader didn't understand it, because it uh, think that we pass it VEC3 and then float, not VEC4. So, uh, 
in this case we need to do it like this uh, where is it where is our geometry oh the heat time is very 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 big uh, so our geometry moves somewhere really away so let's instead of u time we will use the sinus of u time uh, come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. it's moving a lot oh um, yeah and put it in different in a different place I needed to put it here of course uh, sorry uh, so yeah I mean this and uh, this just uh, yeah look in different direction and now our noise working it's too bright maybe it's because somewhere I used the emitters emission I don't need emission or maybe not minus one maybe I like some red emission a little bit okay um, but we could uh, we could do something uh, more more interesting <laughs> let's say more interesting um, what if uh, what if we mm -hmm. what if we do like this would it work? Sometimes uh, you don't know what to expect from different results, so it's good to uh, experiment and see what's going on. Uh, okay, it doesn't work well. And So let's do instead uh, noise and multiply it by new position y so now our noise should also be affected on the uh, y axis y value of a point so no, it's more noise on the top and less noise in the bottom and here's the opposite okay uh, let's use our face it or or no maybe it's a good time to show you something related to normals because uh, I don't show that you see it but here's there is some issues with our normals uh, so we need to fix it because me we move our geometry uh, quite a bit already but we didn't do anything with our normals so our normals still calculated like this point was here or where, wherever it need to be in the original geometry what can we do it we can go into Matthew Reagan website uh, I'm sure you know who is Matthew Reagan and he have a good touch designer GLSL cheat sheet uh, and in the end of this page and I leave a link below there is a vertex stage normal recalculation so you just copy all of this and paste it before before our main function now how it works here we have apply deformation function 
and in the apply deformation we need to insert all of our deformations here's the, our deformations uh, and we need to make some changes uh, let's use here a new position because we use this name everywhere and let's return this new position as well okay now uh, our new position it's uh, would be declared as oops apply deformation and it gives us input position and normals our old position and old normals and then we need to define our new normals new normals and new normals it's automatically computed calculated here the compute normals and again we need to, to give a position uh, new position and normal uh, or all position I can't remember now let's try it both ways and see what works better and here in our TDD form we use our new position and here in world space normals we use our new normals and save uh, what's going on undefined variable new p 60 line 64 line 64 oh new position okay it like this and if i change it to p just p okay we need to add uh, more rows and columns into our geometry into our polygons let's add uh, i don't know 500 rows and 100 points okay this is good i turn it off because sometimes it slows down and drops our fps and i also turn this off and turn this off usually with uh, jlsl you need to have stable 60 fps if it's not 60 probably it's not jlsl code itself probably it's something with your viewing operators and everything else okay let's do one more test which normals looks better no probably it should be like this because yeah here's the apply deformation it used old position and gives new position yeah i think like this okay okay so let's talk about the two function two functions that we will use later okay i don't want this corners anymore i would like to yeah to to back into tube thing and maybe even turn off a noise as well uh, okay new position let's add to new position the floor of our new position y and it gives us this what uh, function floor did is uh, it's returning the floor of our value 
so our tube is goes from zero into two so here our tube uh, let's multiply it by normals again to make it look better uh, maybe not much better but So, uh, floor gives us the floor, the integer of our y coordinate. So, uh, when our height is uh, less than one, it uh, our coordinates multiply it by zero because it's less because the floor value of zero point forty three is zero then when it exceed one it adds the new values which is one here and here two and so on and so on and so on this is floor it's the same as in uh, i don't know if you use lfo amplitude like three and you add the math and you choose the floor it's the same it's the same here but we multiply our y-axis into this integer. Okay, and the fract, it's uh, what's left after floor. So every number, like I just, every number is uh, the, if we choose the floor, floor of, this equals one and the fract of this equals 0 0.33 so if we multiply it by a fraction it should look differently because now the our fractional part goes increase 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 then our fractional part again become uh, zero here and increase 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 and so on and so on it could be used uh, to modify geometry and you could of course combine with noise and with everything oh maybe not this And everything um, but we will use it later in different scenario we will use it in different scenario uh, now maybe it's time to use our face it if we choose uh, unique points and compute normals will have our geometry looks like this and I really like this look and I use it quite a lot uh, and it would work really well with our next topic and our next topic is using sampling uh, let me turn off something let me turn off this okay let me turn off this okay here is better uh, I can use uh, the top or chop in this case I will show it with top to modify the position or color or normal or whatever in our vertex shader uh, I can do it let's uh, maybe decrease our details a bit so it would be more visible How much points? Okay, good. 
let's feed the amount of vertices which equals the amount of points to our shader uh, we call it u no i don't know the variable uh, let's call it something new geo uh, It would be really great to use something like uh, vertices, number of vertices, but there is no such verb, uh, no such parameters. At least I didn't find the how to how to grab this uh, number and put it somewhere. So instead, I'm using number of points because in this case it's uh, the same. But if you use, uh, for example. Uh, mesh and uh, rows and columns and maybe turn off face it well uh, yeah sometimes it's not the same so keep your eye on it because here you need to pass the number of vertices actually okay good uh, so instead we use number of points oops something going on yeah everything fine and geo okay uh, and yeah, let's use the same parameter same parameter here we will have our noise really long top so uh, now our top have the same number and let's make it float and not monochrome and uh, let's add a movement and seconds by zero point two Complex 3D, it's moving, it's moving, okay. Uh, let's connect it to the no, call it uh, position. And here in the samplers page, uh, we give it a name. I used to start the samplers name with the letter S and our top is position and we need to define it here this time a uh, uniform is a sampler 2d s pose s pose okay and now we can use it we can use it and I like to use, uh, you could sample this uh, top with either the texture function or text of fetch function. And the texture function goes from uh, 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1. So if, uh, you need to pass, so it's, it's a complicated. I prefer to use text of fetch because it's much simpler. For textile fetch, let's... Okay, I'm gonna show you. Textile fetch, textile fetch. Um, let's call it like free top noise. Top noise equals uh, textile fetch. And we give our the name of our sampler and the text of fetch it asks for ivec2 and ivec2 asks for two numbers the number of column and the number of row of corresponding top so this time uh, so we need so we are asked for the pixel number one the pixel number two the pixel number 1000 and so on and so on and we have a parameter called 
uh, gl vertex id which is the id of our current uh, vertex it would be our pixel column and uh, we have only one row so it's one and we need to also give a number of details doesn't matter put it zero okay here we have our top noise uh, what's going on oh, probably it's because not defined I, yeah it's ivec2 and implicit cast from vec4 to vec3 it's because our texture is uh, rgba so we need only rgb from here and now let's add it to our position let's turn off everything we have before uh, new position uh, add top noise and here we have it uh, let's <coughs> move it a little bit slower oh maybe not so slow uh, the problem here is that if we increase period a lot it becomes a mess if you like this kind of mess hmm, that's good you can leave it like that but maybe you don't like it maybe you want it uh, be more so here you can uh, uh, see every every primitive it has more or less the same gives the same and every primitive uh, have uh, four vertices so if our noise is really different our primitives could be uh, let me try to show it to you let's use a random noise it should work really well here our every of our points of our vertices has different uh, absolutely random coordinates so our primitives it's not doesn't look as uh, normal rectangles anymore because these coordinates could be uh, several I don't know 10 points away from this uh, this vertex of our primitive so what can we do about it what can we do about it uh, let's give it back to Berlin and we flip really really small period like this but if you think about it uh, every of our primitive consists of uh, four of rectangle because we choose the quads here not triangles if triangles it would be free so uh, so what we need is we need uh, our, our noise we need to give the same coordinate for every four points for for every four uh, every four parts of our primitive i hope uh, you understand what i mean we could do it uh, two ways we could use um where is it image filters uh, pixel pixelate yeah probably it's pixelate not sure pixelate and ask horizontal pixel size equals four and here 
yeah and now it looks better so every primitive stays the same so we have our quads but maybe it's not very efficient way we could do it in jello cell itself so let's delete this and do it in jello cell and that's why i show you uh, this thing with fraction and floor so uh, the ivec 2 here we give uh, we sampling uh, the new pixel for every vertex but what instead if we sample the very same pixel for all of our four vertices for every primitive how can we do it so instead of gel vertex id we will need to use some sample um, let's call it prim and this prim is uh, oops gel vertex id divided by 4 but if we divide it by 4 we will have a fractional uh, number so we could use the floor function I tell you before and now it should work but it didn't because it's float not int so we need to make it integer and now it works Whew. and also since now we use uh, the one pixel for one primitive we could some reduce the amount of uh, the dimension of our noise because now we could use the number of primitives and we could just set resolution as number of prims okay one of uh, possible problems if we set it from quads to triangles everything is broken because now every primitive consists of three points not four so what could we do about it i don't know is it a happy coincidence or maybe it's a very well planned but if you look at this connectivity the parameter uh, quads it's a uh, number four and triangles is number three so it's in a fourth place in the menu and it has four points so we could use this uh, coincidence or planning let's copy this parameter let's copy this parameter and paste it for example here in our view no paste reference so now we have number three uh, and if it's set we set it to triangles we have number three so uh, now let's use this uniform uh, uniform vec2 unum and let's instead the number four we use the second parameter of our unum and now it works and if we set it to back to quads it still works and even if we change it to random noise it still works very good and you could use this a lot the another possible problem here is that our noise is um, or not noise every 
any of our tops, it couldn't be infinite resolution. For example, if I set uh, a lot of rows and a lot of columns, we have some weird issues. Why we have it? Because uh, we have now a, uh, a lot of primitives. I forgot how to call this number. Uh, 80,000 <laughs> primitives, but our noise maximum resolution is um, a little bit above of uh, 30 thousands. How can we do? How can we deal with that? We need to divide and to add new rows somehow. And there is a lot of different solutions which also requires the knowledge of the floor and the fract. Uh, and I leave it to you as an exercise. I think it's uh, not very complicated, not super easy. You will need to add three or four lines of code. And here's an example. Here's an example how it works. Uh, here I have the same about the same setup and my noise is uh, resolution it depends on now it's uh, 1000 okay let me connect it to the info uh, I need look at resolution if I change the details uh, no, okay, here details You could see the resolution of a noise changes. How to do it? Figure it out. It's an exercise for you. Or if you my Patreon subscriber, supporter, I will upload this file with all these examples on my Patreon. And maybe it's a good time to talk about Patreon. Now I have uh, uh, two options. You could subscribe with uh, $5 per month and you'll get all example files for every um, of my tutorials so you don't need to recreate it yourself. Or if you want to learn more, I have another option and I'll share some another techniques that didn't cover in my tutorials. So feel free to support me and maybe not maybe it definitely helped me to make more videos and make it more often and yeah that's good okay let's continue let's continue let's continue let's reduce the amount of uh, our stuff here And we could use the same for coloring our, our geometry. Let's uh, copy paste in the noise. Let's just change a C, change a peri uh, period, and let's call it color. Let's add it here in the samplers. Let's call it as color. And here, oops, as color, uh, and we could do, we could type this same thing, but we could be, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the same thing, but we could be a more smart let's make a function from this let's call it vec4 because we sampling the four values and call it sampling sampling and as input it will ask us uh, sampler 2d sample 
Okay. And now let's uh, uh, cut and paste it here. And we need to make some changes uh, instead of S position because we could use the different samplers. We passed our name and uh, we need to return. Re Let's call this vec for sample and return all four values. Oops. So now it will it would work this way. Instead of writing it here, we just add a sampling and we need here sample position and we need only interested only in RGBA or RGB and it should work but it didn't what was that sampler of the type specifier something is wrong sampler 2d sampler 2d Turn to do, turn to do. Okay, yeah, probably this uh, the word sample I used was some uh, built-in variable and that's why it do the error maybe something else I don't know anyway now it works again and so they back to the color and now we could uh, go to our color section here we don't pass any color to our pixel shader or we pass the color of instance, but we don't use instances, so we don't pass any color. But let's uh, let's add new variable, call it color, and it will be a sampling of s color, and let's. Uh, pass this color to our pixel part fragment shader so now it's multiplied by color it's still affect by our diffuse material but it also multiplied by this noise let me yeah it works Okay, and uh, probably the last thing for today is the way of, uh, okay, two last things <laughs> for today. First of all, the, let me turn on everything and hear how it looks. Uh, and the, Uh, what? Sorry, I lost my thought. Uh, okay, uh, the order of lines uh, really matters. So if I put it, for example, here and uh, put it, for example, here, it should be. It should look differently, and it looks differently. So you need to keep uh, the order of your transformation. You keep an order of your transformation and you need to think about it. What you, need, what you wanna do first and what you wanna do second and so on. And another thing is uh, you could experiment and improvise like I did here. It's a one way of doing things. 
Another way is uh, to new your math and new your geometry and not improvising but do something that works. For example, for example, I know that that I have uh, that we have a rotation functions. Uh, it works like this: uh, new position. It's touch designable to built-in variable. To the rotate, and here you pass the uh, axis. For example, I want rotation in x, and here you pass the angle in radians. For example, I'll use u uh, time. So now my geometry rotates. Okay. Uh, so going back to our math, I know that uh, it happens that I know that the bending is a rotation rotation where the angle depends on a position so if we oops what's going on Wow, yeah, wow, this looks great. I talked about the planning, but I did something unexpected and I like it. Okay, <laughs> looks nice, but not what I want. It's because, ah, it's because again, your time is very, very big. So let's use the sin of our, uh, sin as function of our your time. And here's our bending. So that's our bending, and bending is um, bending and twisting. Uh, let's turn off our bending. Twisting is very similar, but uh, for the bending, we rotate on x axis depending on the position of y uh, for example this the higher parts of our geometry rotates more than the lower part of our geometry uh, the twisting is use the same axis for the rotation and for the angle here's our twisting it's hard to see it here but you could see it a little bit. But it would be much more visible if we choose the my favorite thing of all, torus, and add the geometry. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Oh, this is because this match go, goes back to polygon and uh, it's twisting but on different axes and here we need to use X or Z so it should be the same axis here in our twisting but the orientation should be different okay and we see some bad things going on here because our noise it's not uh, seamless you could experiment with probably with texture oh no the texture wouldn't affect it but um, if you choose the sort and if you sort the primitives here you could find a better result or yeah also looks very nice or maybe not nice but okay I like it mm. 
And what if we connect it here? And what if we sort like this? Okay, anyway. Anyway, now you could experiment with all of this, all of that stuff. And uh, let me in the end just uh, turn on anything, everything I have and see the real mess of everything. Yeah, it's very messy. And it's good to end this part of the tutorial. And as I said before, the next part will be on the next week or maybe a little bit later and it would be about using the instances page and uh, we have uh, a lot of instances parameters uh, here and we will experiment with instances and uh, so uh, goodbye my card have fun and uh, subscribe to me on youtube or on instagram support me on patreon if you like it and i'll send this file oh by the way <laughs> the very 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 last thing textures you could do the same with texture the only thing you need to do is uh, in, in the very beginning when you make a phone you add a color map and only after that you press the output shader and everything else is the same and of, by the way it's absolutely the same with PBR materials you set up your PBR uh, press output shaders and again the vertex shader is very same so now that's it and all of that examples you will find on my Patreon if you are my subscriber. Whew, it was uh, one hour or maybe even more. So it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye.